For a millennium, we have looked up at the sky and wondered if we are alone. It seems unlikely that the vast, dark universe, spanning almost 93 billion light years, would be completely devoid of other life forms. Or are we truly alone in the abyss? The closest we have to an answer is a signal the Parkes Radio Telescope in Australia caught on April 29, 2019. And whatever it captured scared our astronomers. Is this the very first? Not at all. In August 1977, astronomers detected a radio signal from deep space. Known as the WOW signal, it was only heard once and never again. The astronomers made several attempts to recover and identify the signal, but there was no success. What followed were several hypotheses, but none of them have ever been widely accepted. The most popular, however, was that the signal came from a sun-like star 1800 light years away in the direction of the center of the Milky Way. The Voyager 1 also sent back some haunting signals as it crossed the solar system and ventured into interstellar space. The signal caught by the Parkes telescope appears to have come from the closest star to our Sun, Proxima Centauri. We know there is a planet orbiting that star. Is that what it came from? Proxima Centauri lies only 4.2 light years away and is a red dwarf with at least two known planets. One of those planets, Proxima Centauri b, is a little bit larger than Earth and orbits within the habitable zone of the star a region where temperatures could allow liquid water to exist. The other planet, Proxima Centauri c, is about seven times more massive than our Earth. And that's about as much as we know. The star itself is quite volatile, emitting powerful flares of ionizing radiation. Proxima Centauri b in particular is subject to this radiation. So, though it is in the habitable zone, it might not actually be suitable for life. In total, the Parkes Radio Telescope gathered 26 hours of data. But when they analyzed it, astronomers noticed something odd. A single pure tone at a frequency of 982.02 MHz that appeared five times in the data. Oftentimes, when we point our telescopes anywhere in the sky, we only detect a hissing noise, which is expected from galaxies and the Big Bang radiation. It is not unlike the sound we get when we tune our TV sets or radios. If any alien life was, in fact, trying to communicate with us, we would still get a hissing noise, but accompanied with a faint whistle, which we did. And it music even sounds outer spacey, doesn't it? Do you hear that, that whistling sound? Now the debate is whether this is the signal we're waiting for or simply an interference from here on Earth. It is not unheard of. Similarly exciting signals have been found every once in a while. The Parkes Radio Telescope once picked up a signal in the 1990s, only for the scientists to later find out that the sound was from the microwave oven in the lunchroom. So, is the signal from Proxima Centauri real? Who knows, maybe not. The result might be a blessing in disguise. If they are in fact out there, they might not have our best interests at heart. They might be more interested in taking over and stripping us of our resources rather than living in harmony. On the off chance that they don't exist, it might just be a good thing. The detection was made as part of an overall study of Proxima Centauri by Breakthrough Listen. It was first noticed in the data by intern Shane Smith in late October of 2020 when the data from 2019 was being reanalyzed. The scientists involved are continuing to study it with much interest, and so far, they haven't been able to identify the culprit. It's worth noting that the sound came from the direction of Proxima Centauri. It also appears to be a simple signal, with no modulation, just a single tone. It had absolutely no additional features, at least not one we can pick up on right now. And the signal isn't coming from a stationary object either. It drifts as if coming from a planet in orbit, and it isn't coming in the direction we would expect. Astronomers expected the signal to be going down in frequency, like a trombone, but instead, the frequency goes up. What does this mean? Well, the lack of meaning is precisely what has our astronomers worried. We can't possibly determine what an alien life could want, and uncertainty provokes fear, but really, 
What are the odds of an alien life existing? The Copernican principle is the idea that Earth has no privileged place in the universe and is at no special time. So, the observations made from here are no more unusual than observations taking place anywhere else in the universe. This principle has a past. It is named after 14th century astronomer Nicholas Copernicus, where once we believed our planet is the center of the universe, Copernicus found that the Earth instead orbited the Sun. Almost 30 years ago, astronomer Richard Gott used the same principles to explain that humanity had a beginning and therefore will have an end. We currently sit somewhere on the timeline in between, but at no special place or time, not particularly near the beginning or the end. In mathematical terms, we are unlikely to be in the first 2.5% of humanity's existence, nor in the final 2.5%. So we must be somewhere in the middle. So now, it's a question of slotting the numbers. Our species is about 200,000 years old, which can account for 2.5% of the total. That suggests, with 95% certainty, that humanity should be around for at least another 200,000 years but no longer than 8 million years. Humanity has had radio for just over 100 years. The chances of our period overlapping with another civilization's having the same capability for communication are quite small, but not completely zero. Amir Siraj and Abraham Loeb from Harvard University are using this argument to the likelihood that our civilization's radio capability overlaps with another civilization's capability on Proxima Centauri. And if that's the case, it would violate the Copernican principle by eight orders of magnitude. But there might be more than one explanation. Indeed, given the considerable number of potentially habitable planets in the universe, the idea that two neighboring stars should host advanced civilizations at the same time does seem extraordinarily unlikely. That is, unless other factors are at work. One such factor is panspermia. The idea that life is seeded from space that increases the chances of neighboring stars hosting advanced life at the same time. But this has been disproved as a theory already, because we know that life emerged on Earth some 4.5 billion years ago, long before our Sun and Proxima Centauri became neighbors. But keep in mind that the Copernican principle cannot entirely rule out the possibility that the signal heard at parks is from another civilization. All we can do now is point the radio telescope back at Proxima Centauri and wait. And should we find something, a signal, a message, all we can do is hope our neighbors are not hostile. A cynical approach might not be the way to go should we find intelligent life in our neighboring star system, but we are cynical by nature, only to protect our civilization from change that we might not like. Whether or not there's life outside, however, one thing's for sure. No matter how worried we may be about the nature of extraterrestrial lives, we will always keep looking.